Good morning and welcome to the Daily Devotion at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Vicar Trevor Flanick. This is the 23rd week after Trinity and the Gospel lesson for this week comes from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the thing that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What a fitting scripture lesson for today of all days. The release date for this daily devotion is November 5th, 2024, Election Day. This election year has been one of the most memorable election years, I think, in just about everyone's lifetime. It's been very dynamic. It's been exciting. It's been for some people, very anxiety-inducing because of everything that's been going on, because of the candidates and their policies. For many people, this has been a very tumultuous year because of this. One of the things that makes this election year so dynamic, I think, is how much both sides are telling us that unless their candidate wins, America's doomed. They tell us that The president has the ability to make or break this country. They say that you should go out and vote because unless this candidate wins, whether it's the Republicans saying it or the Democrats who are saying it, unless their candidate wins, the America that we know and that we love is gone forever. This is the final future fight for America, allegedly. And so because of these messages that we are hearing constantly on the radio, on our televisions, on our phones and computers, for many people, it has been a very uncertain and very difficult time. Now, what does all of this have to do with our gospel lesson for today? Well, it's a matter of faith and trust. Jesus, in our gospel lesson, is put to the test by the Pharisees and Herodians. They come up to him and ask him, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Is it right to pay this type of homage to an earthly ruler? And they think they've got him because they think they're forcing him to pick sides. Because if he says, yes, it is lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, they can accuse him of being a Roman pawn, of having allegiance to a pagan god, because after all, Caesar considered himself divine. And so to pay taxes to Caesar then would mean that Jesus is endorsing Caesar as a god. But if Jesus says no, if he says it's not lawful, well, the Herodians are right there. They can arrest him or they can turn him over to the Roman authorities for trying to start a rebellion against the Roman rule. But Jesus doesn't give them the pleasure of answering yes or no. Instead, he flips the question back on them, telling them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. What are the things of Caesar's? What is it that we ought to render to him? Well, in this scripture lesson, Jesus is teaching us what it means to be a citizen of two kingdoms, to be a citizen of this earthly kingdom while simultaneously being a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. He shows us that we ought to submit to our earthly rulers, that that to submit to these rulers is in accordance with the fourth commandment, honor your father and mother. 
So that means that when we render to Caesar, sometimes we pay taxes. We should render to Caesar obedience to laws. We should do our civic duty. We should participate in government. We should vote. We should do those things that God has given to Caesar within his authority. After all, government is a good gift from God. St. Paul tells us in Romans 13 that the government is God's minister to you for good. So God has given us these rulers to maintain order in the land, to protect the weak and the helpless, to ensure that there is justice in this earth. And so God has given them authority to do that, to carry out that office and vocation while here on this earth. So we ought to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. But this also means that we don't render to Caesar the things that are not rightfully his. What things would that be? Well, our worship. Our fear, love, and trust that is owed to God alone. Those things we should not and we cannot give to Caesar, even if Caesar were to demand it. If Caesar were to say, you must stop preaching the gospel, you cannot share the good news of Jesus Christ with those around you. We cannot obey a command like that because God has not given authority to Caesar to make such a demand. If Caesar were to say, you must believe something contrary to Scripture, or that you cannot believe in Jesus Christ, we cannot obey such a command, because Caesar has not been given such an authority by God to ask you to render that thing to him. Did Caesar die for your sins? Did Caesar give his life so that you might have eternal life and salvation? He didn't. No matter who Caesar is, no matter who the government is, they don't have the authority and the right and the claim to your soul. So we should not give Caesar our soul willingly. We should not give our faith and our trust to Caesar in the same way that we have our fear and our love and our trust in God and in God alone. Jesus tells us in Scripture as well, do not fear those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. The government might bear the sword, but they can only kill your earthly body. So we shouldn't fear them more than we fear the one who can kill our body and soul in hell. That is God. But rather, we ought to fear, love, and trust in God, not only because he has the power to kill body and soul in hell, but what is more, he has the power and he has already saved your very soul on the cross. So if ever Caesar were to demand that we have more allegiance to him over God, if he were to demand that our very soul and our faith, we ought to answer with the same boldness as St. Peter did, to the authorities in Jerusalem. We must obey God rather than man. This text today is a great comfort, especially on election day. It's a great comfort because it reminds us that while good government is a gift, our fear and our hope and our eternal salvation does not rest in the hands of whoever is living in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in DC. Our future doesn't fall in the hands of any government or any Caesar for that matter. That authority has not been given to Caesar. God alone holds your very life and future in his hands. So we shouldn't give Caesar our soul. We shouldn't give him our ultimate trust and our faith. But rather, we should give our faith to the one who has rendered his life for you. He rendered his life for you on the cross so that you might render to him your faith and receive your salvation and eternal life. It's Jesus Christ. That's who we should trust, and in him alone. 
Does Donald Trump or Kamala Harris hold your eternal soul and your future in their hands? They don't. Neither of them do. No Caesar does. So don't put your faith and your trust in any Caesar, but rather fear, love, and trust in the one who holds your soul, who holds your eternal life in his nail-pierced hands. Trust in Jesus Christ and in him alone. In his holy name, amen. Amen.